Midweek matinee lacrosse in a top 20 matchup to boot. Number seven, Duke, nearly unbeatable at home, but don't tell number 17, Delaware. The Blue Hens want to prove they belong on the national stage and earn an ACC upset. With former Stevens faceoff man RJ Ancona, my name is Matt Krause. Thanks so much for being with us here today. Well, RJ, another year that Duke is loaded with talent, but one player just a little bit different. It's the sophomore, Brennan O'Neill. Yeah, he's big, strong, athletic. He's a, a nightmare from the left side. A point in all 22 of his games as a Blue Devil, a hat trick in 12 of those 22. And with some players, you might worry about a sophomore slump. That is certainly not the case for O'Neal. He has scored 15 goals so far this season, assisted on five more, carrying the load for the Blue Devil offense. So how does Delaware slow him down? Glad you asked. Owen Grant, the CAA Defensive Player of the Year from last season. Yeah, good size matchup on O'Neal. The, the tail of the tape today is going to be can he stay in his hands the whole game and, and not let him get to the middle. Grant, the conference's Defensive Player of the Year last year, preseason Defensive Player of the Year in the CAA. He's out of Canada and is huge at 6'3", 215. Jake Naso for Duke against Logan Premtage of Delaware at the faceoff X to get this one going. Faceoffs, not the strength of either of these teams, but yet you would think that Delaware would need to perform well there in order to give themselves a chance here in Durham. Duke's in the white, Delaware is in the blue. It's a big scrum over here, Duke picking it up. It is Naso who missed Duke's lone loss this season, which came to Jacksonville two games ago, a 14-12 victory for the Dolphins. Here on this field at Koskinen Stadium, snapped a 14-game home winning streak for Duke. Naso back in the mix in the Blue Devils' most recent action. That was a 19-10 home win over number 11, Denver, back on Saturday. Much needed victory for the Blue Devils. So they were able to get back on their feet, so to speak. Yeah, one thing to watch here is how, how Duke sets up on offense. They, they like to play a, a, a spread format of offense and try and cause adjacent slides and then look for the middle there. Dyson Williams had a shot turned away. Nakai Montgomery comes up with it. Duke will keep it here. Shot clock did not reset. McAdory to Robertson on the doorstep. And Matt Kilkiri of Delaware comes up with a key initial save. Grant picks up the ground ball. That's a huge save right there to start off the game. Kilkiri, second year starting keeper for the Blue Hens. Fifth year senior from Lake Sherwood, California. And Delaware will go on offense for the first time. Yeah, right there, Duke tried to capitalize on an unsettled situation. It looked like the uh, Delaware goalie made an uncanny save. So typically in a midweek contest like this, both teams might be coming in off short rest. That's not the case for the Blue Hens, who open the scoring. Ty Kurtz, the senior from north of the border with his first of the season. Great shot there, low to high. S snuck one past Adler there. Yeah, if you look, watch here, offensive player shades his guy towards the middle of the field, and they slide adjacent, leaving the, the wide open guy on the low pipe. Seven multi-goal games in 2021 for Kurtz. Didn't play the first two games for Delaware, made his season debut in the Blue Hens' last action we were starting to tell you about just before that goal. It came a week ago against St. Joseph's. No weekend game for Delaware, so they've got a full week of rest. And a quick answer. What an answer for Duke. They win the faceoff, take it down and score. It's Tyler Carpenter, the junior from right here in Durham. His first of the year. Yeah, what a shot here. He's able to pick up a, a loose ball opportunity and coming down the field as a long pole. If you uh, shoot straight up and down, goalie's not gonna be able to read it as well as a short stick. Duke's primary long stick defensive midi taking it down and scoring. Arjo, are you surprised that Duke tried to go that quickly off the faceoff? No, they, they play a very, very fast tempo. And, uh, you know, Coach John Donowski said the other day that, you know, they like to capitalize on transition opportunities. And that was a perfect one right there. It looks like the, uh, the, the defense from Delaware held on their attackman. And, you know, he had a wide open shot coming down the middle of the lane. So the Blue Devils will take possession here. High powered offense, nearly 17 goals a game, 12th best nationally. The season's roughly two and a half weeks old here. Yep. Brennan O'Neill has Grant Owen hung there. He'll save. Kilkiri denies him right there on the porch. Owen Grant. Five, four, 
Successful clear for the Blue Hens. Duke backing off on the ride, and Delaware with the opportunity to take the lead, but an unforced error. And a CAA team playing on the road, even if they are a top 20 team in Delaware, trying to spring an upset like this one, you can't have unforced errors like that. I'm sure there's a lot of nerves playing here in Koskinen. You know, a player tried to catch that ball with his feet standing still. You want to be approaching that ball and catch that ball moving. Second midfield line in here for Duke. Charlie O'Connor, the sophomore from Virginia, gives it up for Robertson. Back around now for Sean Lully, graduate transfer from Penn. He is big, he is physical, and he's a feeder. Dyson Williams, back of the cage. Yeah, that's great ball movement right there. And as we uh, go into a, a replay here, if you could tell, we have the Dodger here looking to uh, cause a quick slide. And the guy in the crease reads that, reads the slide well, cuts back door, and great inside finish. 19th goal of the season for Williams. Duke's leading point score coming into play. RJ with just three points today, he can match his season total from a year ago, which was a 16-game season for him. And this is game number six of the year for Duke. Yeah, that's incredible. Uh, you know, one thing I, I want to point out is, is Duke plays a, a very, very box-style offense. And uh, with Tyson Williams being a Canadian player, uh, you know, he's bound to take advantage of, of situations within this offense. Well, the bloodlines are incredible. His father, Sean, an NLL Hall of Famer, wore that number 51 in his career. Dyson, second-generation Williams to wear the number. Montgomery from distance goes low and gets it past Kilkiri. Yeah, a, another another uh, dodge there, drawing a, a slide and throwing the ball back. Here as McAdory draws a slide, throws it back, and Nikai Montgomery with a nice bounce shot. Why was Montgomery so open there? So he, he slipped a, what looked like an inside pick, and it, it, Delaware had a little bit of confusion there on, on who's going to approach the ball carrier. No one was, no one was covering Nikai Montgomery. So it's three unanswered for Duke since Delaware drew first blood in this game. And we said we'd be watching the face-off X all game long. Duke now with a 4-1 advantage there. Delaware in their last action against St. Joseph's a week ago, they won just eight of the 26 face-offs in that game. And quite simply, that's an area that the Blue Hens will need to get better regardless of who they're facing. I don't know if that ball was saved there. If it was, that was an amazing save. Looked like a Blue Devil had a foot in the crease, so possession will go the way of Delaware. Matt Kilkiri between the pipes for Delaware. Utilizing the extra year of eligibility due to the pandemic to come back this season, despite the fact that he's a grad student, only his second year starting. Filling the footsteps of Matt DeLuca, standout former goalkeeper for the Blue Hens, who now plays in the PLL. Big footsteps as it is. It looks like Delaware has got a history of tall goalies. In goal for Duke at the other end, Mike Adler, the active leader in career saves. 652 for the sixth year senior in St. Joseph's transfer. JP Ward from X. Ward turns the corner and makes it a one goal game. And the flag to boot. Seventh goal of the season for J.P. Ward, the Owings Mills Maryland sophomore, and an unassisted goal from behind. So we'll await the penalty call here. Miko Red Arrow, our lead official this afternoon. And it's an unnecessary roughness call against the Blue Devils. Called against Gavin Lindsay. Yeah, it looks like here Delaware has their guy hung up. And uh, Blue Hen player sneaks top side, throws a fake that Adler bites on early and puts it low past the goalie. It's the goal for Ward, as we said, seventh of the season. And Lindsay will have to sit for a minute. We will have a face off, though. Niso will win it for Duke. Looks like Niso settled into a rhythm here. So Duke will go on offense in a man down situation. What's the strategy here holding possession down a man? Well, with the shot clock, you have to be a, a little patient, but you also can't forget that you uh, have to get a shot off in, in 80 seconds. And 
you know, I think one thing to do here is eat as much clock as you possibly can. You know, try and uh, try and get some kind of isolation dodge towards the towards the end of it. Yeah, there is roughly a 23 second difference shot to penalty clock right now. Yeah, for Delaware, I'd I'd be careful here. I I wouldn't want to uh, double the ball with with Duke's athletes, but you also uh, want to be careful of their ability to dodge. So you got to have a slide ready at all times. Montgomery and Owen Caputo play catch out near midfield as the penalty time dwindles away. And we're back to even strength. Still 24 to shoot for Duke. It's a good penalty kill. O'Neal has Grant on him. It's the matchup we'll be watching all day long. Robertson for Williams, his second upper 90. Dyson Williams scores again. Yeah, it looks like here Delaware slides a little too early and just can't recover in time. Dyson Williams with the great high to high finish. And the feed from Robertson too. Yeah, it's perfect. Right on his stick, ear to ear. Gives him the ability to get that shot out as quick as he can. So a second goal of the game for Dyson Williams. He switched back to attack this season. Duke wins the face off yet again. Thought about taking it down. Naso didn't see a look, so he gives it off for Robertson. Yeah, with Duke's ability to play at almost a positionless offense, Dyson Williams could be effective down low, up top. I, I don't think it really matters where he plays on the field. He's just as effective, especially if he gets a long stick covering him. Now he and Sean Lully have been alternating, playing some attack, playing midfield. They've been alternating by quarter. Montgomery bounces one wide. It's backed up by Duke. Blue Devils will keep possession here with O'Neal taking it in. Yeah, I think if, if Dyson Williams winds up getting a, a long stick covering him, it, it frees up uh, some of the athletic midfielders that Duke has for short stick matchups and initiations. O'Neal couldn't get a dodge on Owen Grant. Aiden Denenza, talented sophomore from St. Anthony's in Long Island. O'Neal turns the corner. And Brennan O'Neal has his first goal of the game. A great, great finish here by one of our players to watch as he climbs top side. He throws a fake, and you know, with Brennan O'Neal, he can he can finish, he can feed, so you gotta be careful and watch out for him at all times. Delaware calls a timeout. Ben DeLuca needs to talk things over after Brennan O'Neill pushes the Duke lead out to three. Blue Devil offense clicking early on a Tuesday. We're coming for you, Lucky. This St. Patrick's Day, the Clover Charms turn milk green. Where'd he go? We must have made a wrong turn. Turn your milk green with these special Lucky Charms. They're magically delicious. We love our new apartment. Great kitchen. So you go to Geico. It's today, but they worked together in 2018 as coaches for Team USA, helping the United States national team to a world championship. There's Ben DeLuca, head coach of the Blue Hens, a former assistant here in Durham, spent 2014 and 2015 as part of Coach Donowski's staff. And RJ, he had nothing but positive things to say about his experience here in Durham. Yeah, I think they both shared some pretty special times. You know, winning a NCAA title together is a, an, an awesome moment. And, you know, it's always interesting when you uh, have to go up against a, a former coach. Kurtz can't pick up the ground ball. This will be Duke's possession. A Blue Devil team that saw Delaware strike first, take an early 1-0 lead. But the Blue Hens have struggled to maintain possession since. 7-1 advantage in face-offs one here for Duke. There's a turnover though, and J.P. Ward with a look, had Adler off his line, and it's a second goal this game for J.P. Ward. A costly turnover for the Blue Devils leads to Ward's eighth of the season. Yeah, it looks like Coach DeLuca dialed up a, a pressure ride scenario off the faceoff here, causing a, a, a turnover and great finish by uh, J.P. Ward. And that's exactly what Delaware 
wanted. That's exactly what they could have drawn up out of a timeout situation. Worth noting that the Blue Hens have switched their faceoff man. That was Roland Hockenberry in there. Hockenberry, a junior from Middletown, Maryland. And this will be possession for Delaware. Costly, costly turnover there for, for Duke and what seemed like it would be a possession. It's what Delaware needs to get back in the game here. And three giveaways by the Blue Devils, but back-to-back -back Duke turnovers. Because for a while, Duke was playing make it, take it there. Nick Jessen, the midfielder, turned aside by Adler. That'll reset the shot clock if Delaware can maintain possession, which they cannot. It's Wilson Stevenson there in the vacuum cleaner. Great save by Adler. Way to get the ball up the field quickly. An effective clear puts the ball into the cross of Robertson. Garrett Ledman, defensive midfielder, lethal in transition, number one in white. And the Blue Devils will bring their second offensive midfield unit onto the field here. Yeah, Garrett Ledman is an instant transition maker. He's scary coming down the field. 6-4-2-25. That's, that's a load right there. It's a guy a little bigger than Brendan O'Neill running at you downfield. <laughs> and O'Neill's a big guy at 6-2. Caputo, a skip pass for O'Connor. Caputo from distance, bounces wide. Backed up, though, by Robertson. Duke will keep it, no reset. Looks like Delaware here is having a little trouble playing uh, against Duke's pair's offense. How do they adjust that? For me personally, you almost want to hold and slide from the crease, uh, but with how big and fast and physical Duke is, it's it's going to be tough either way you stack it up. Matt Kilkiri in the right place at the right time on the shot by Caputo. It's the third save of the game for Kilkiri. It seems that Delaware is playing a very similar style of offense, just out of a, a different set. So both teams should be fairly used to playing against this type of offense. Ty Kurtz has scored already for Delaware, number two in blue. And the Blue Hens will bring their second midfield unit on here. Kyle Kavinsky, four in blue. Also out there, Drew Lenkaitis, number eight. Lenkaitis can't connect with Ward, and we talk about costly turnovers for Duke. There's one for Delaware. An unforced error gives possession right back to the Blue Devils. Yeah, that's a, that's a big one they really needed to capitalize on. And extra possession right there. Kai Montgomery, veteran leader in the midfield. Finds Aiden Denenza, one of the many St. Anthony's products on this Duke roster. Denenza, Andrew McAdory, the highly touted freshman, is just jogging onto the field, two in white. And of course, Brendan O'Neill, Jake Naso, the faceoff guy. It's like a pipeline, Long yeah. Island to Durham. Don't forget about Andrew Bonafidi, the back of goalie. Denenza had a look, dodges instead. Bouncer misses. Yeah, St. Anthony's has a history of uh, producing high-level talent. McAdory and Brennan O'Neill are certainly two of the best in the country. This is McAdory, the speedy freshman, number two recruit in the nation, and he sneaks it past Kilkiri for his first goal of the game. Fourth of the season for the highly touted freshman. Yeah, right here, climbs top side. McAdory's first step is just too fast to defend there. And puts a hard shot right between the goalie's pipes. Playing on the first midfield line immediately as a freshman at Duke. That requires some talent. He's like a lightning bolt a shot out of a jar. I mean, he's one of the fastest guys I've ever seen dodge. Blue Devils will take possession again here. His high school coach at St. Anthony said that Andrew's not a stats-driven kid, which is odd for a superstar. And I think some of that is because so much of his game is built around speed. Sure, he's a great finisher, as we saw there, but that speed is perhaps his greatest asset. Yeah, I think part of that too has to uh, has to do with playing at St. Anthony's. Uh, I mean, you know, year year in year out, they have several Division One talents. I mean, 
just just right here on this field, you've got two kids that played at the same high school. Uh, I think that's there's a lot to say about you know sharing the ball and the success of the team. Williams was ready to go behind the back. And Owen Grant causes the turnover. He'll try and take it front side and transition himself. That's a phenomenal handle by the long pole there. The physical Canadian, and Grant wants to shoot Mike Adler there on the far post. Got a transition opportunity for Duke. O'Neill comes up with the ground ball. Thought about passing, fires instead. Brennan O'Neill with a flamethrower. With how big, it's a great save here by Adler. Owen Grant tried to take advantage of the long pole situation. Right here, Brendan O'Neill is just too big and his shot motion is just too long for the goalie to read that quickly. He's, he's just too powerful. RJ, I thought he was going to pass it to Williams on goal line extended. Instead, he just reared back and fired and perhaps caught Kilkiri, the goalie, a little bit off balance as well. Yeah, right there, he had two good options. You know, obviously uh, the, the feed down low, but you know, if you could put your foot in the ground and shoot 90 miles an hour, it's going to catch any goalie off guard. Another face-off win. Naso wants to score himself well high. Williams was there for backup, though. If Naso can continue to push transition like that, eventually they're going to have to slide and leave open one of Duke's attackmen. What are the downsides of doing that? Well, you leave open one of Duke's attackmen. <laughs> Uh, but Naso can shoot. You know, he's, he's not afraid to, uh, to to score a goal or two. Uh, but yeah, if you're Delaware, it's it's pick your poison. You know, either you're gonna you're gonna slide and leave open, you know, one of one of Duke's highly touted attackmen, or you're gonna let the faceoff guy run right down the middle of the field and into the front of the goal mouth. Blue Devils going even deeper into their midfield depth chart. Third midfield on here. Cameron Badur five in white. Reed Landon twenty six in white. Grant Mitchell, the Ohio State transfer, number 55. It looks like Joe Robertson has hobbled up a little bit. Definitely favoring his left leg. Mitchell, undergraduate transfer from Ohio State. He's a junior. Gives it up for Padua, one of the team captains. Land in a roll dodge, a bounce shot. And this will stay with Duke, but just 10 to shoot. So a low shot clock situation. And Robertson will jog to the Duke bench here. As we said, he looked a little bit hobbled. And yeah, not, not sure what happened there. Change of direction and maybe caught the turf a little weird. Hope he's okay. Williams with seven. Williams. The feed sails past Lully, and this will be a shot clock violation. Because the scores, comes up with a key stop. Yeah, smart play there. Dump it in the corner, let the uh, shot clock ring out. So the 17th ranked Blue Hens back on offense. They scored the game's first goal, and then conceded to allow Duke to take a 5 to 1 lead. Back to back goals from Delaware, and now back to back goals by Duke. Almost an over and back, won't matter as ground ball is picked up, but officials will stop play, I believe, on this over and back call. Now we'll give it back to Delaware. It looks like it was an interference off ball. Yeah, right there, Duke was in a slough ride, and did a great job communicating, was able to bump the field over and got their long pole on the ball as Delaware threw it over the midline. But it looks like there was a interference or a hold off ball that cause a turnover there. So the Blue Hens will keep it. Mark Bita, one of the Blue Hens utilizing his extra year of eligibility due to the pandemic, 48 in blue. Locates Ward already, two goals today for J.P. Ward, but he is a face full of Kenny Brower, the all-ACC defender. Yeah, that's a really strong defense there. Kurtz wanted a second. Adler says no with a low save. Great save, now we've got a slow break opportunity for Duke coming down the field. Stevenson will take it front side. Wilson Stevenson locates Lully. Duke will settle things here. Who ultimately makes the call whether to take a transition look or to slow things down? Typically, it should be the point attackman or the, the attackman that's uh, 
that's communicating to the upfield players. Right there, you got Duke coming down on a five on four scenario. Um, what you're looking to do is try and push it to a side. And uh, looked like the, the Delaware defender kind of caught up a little bit and gave the long pull a little bit of trouble there. Final 10 seconds of the opening quarter. Montgomery trying to make something happen. Takes a desperation shot. And will roll over the end line. See if Dyson Williams can squeeze it in the crease. And oh, almost a great handle there by Denenza. Williams couldn't quite connect with Denenza, but Duke clicking here after one quarter. They lead it 7-3. Four goal lead for Duke after a quarter against Delaware. Dyson Williams has two of the first seven for the Blue Devils. Sarge, he's been impressive. Yeah, he's a, a Canadian box player from north of the border, and you know he's used to scoring on the small goal. Does a great job of cutting behind the defenders' helmets, and anytime he catches it inside, it's a it's surely going to be finished. So Williams, a junior, now finds himself just one point away from matching his 2021 output. That was a 16-game season. This is game number six for Duke. Talk about efficiency. You know, I think he's finishing the ball at a, at a very good clip this season. And, you know, certainly, I think, taking advantage of a little bit more playing time as well. Delaware here bumping up field in a 10-man ride, it looks like. Duke able to take advantage of the soft spot in the, in the zones on the backside of the 10-man. Duke has dominated possession so far in this game. They've controlled the faceoff X 10-2. Shots 17-6 in favor of the Blue Devils. They're doing a great job of moving the ball around the perimeter and finds an open McAdory right in the middle. Second goal of the game for Andrew McAdory. Fifth this season for the freshman. And he pushes the Duke lead out to a game high five. When you move the ball as, as quickly as Duke is, you know, eventually Delaware is going to break down somewhere defensively, and right there, they just couldn't recover in time, and McAdory takes advantage of a defenseman that over commits towards the ball. So McAdory finds the back of the net. It's his first career two-goal game. And it's only fitting, RJ, that a first career two-goal game for the number two recruit by inside lacrosse, who wears number two, comes on two 22-22. Lots of twos. On a Tuesday at that. Might be the reason the sun is out in Durham. Cloudy all day. McAdory scores his second goal. The sun peeks out from the clouds. So the sun shines through, but Duke wins possession yet again. Yeah, that first quarter was really exciting there. You know, I thought Duke was going to pull away a little bit, and Delaware came back, and you know, punched at him uh, a couple times, and, and now it appears as Duke is starting to firmly take control of the game. A balanced offense. Three different Blue Devils have two goals apiece, so Neil McAdory Williams. Looks like Delaware has switched into his zone here. We've got Owen Grant playing point, trying to use his length and good save. Kilkiri smothers the shot. Was Williams from goal line extended off a nice feed from Jaden Carey. Delaware gets the all-important stop. Chance to cut this deficit down to four here early in the second quarter. Yeah, right there, Delaware just needs to uh, try and slow down the Duke offense, switch into his zone. You know, Duke's got to work a little harder to get some, get some open looks. Last game out against St. Joseph's. Delaware went down 4-1. They reeled off six straight goals to take control of that game and eventually win it by one. A game that head coach Ben DeLuca said was one of those not so pretty games that you need to find a way to win. On the road, physical midweek game. And you want to win pretty anytime you take the field. Obviously, you want to try and play that perfect game. But the reality of the situation is that's not always going to happen. And Delaware got that learning experience last Tuesday. From a coach's perspective, a, a win's a win, but you know, I, I think it, in Coach DeLuca's vision, um, you know, Delaware seems to be a little battle-tested. Ward locates Kurtz, trying to make the extra pass for Bita. Blue Devils can't take it away cleanly, though, and Delaware will keep it here, only to throw it away again. That's the second time today, RJ, that we've seen 
a feed to a cutting JP Ward behind goal line extended, result in an unforced turnover. Yeah, it's a it's a tough situation right there. He, he was he was going to have a good opportunity to push high side, and just took his eye off the ball. Third turnover in total for Ward. Remember he had the turnover as well over on the far sideline early on in the game. Yeah, he you know, might might be a little too excited. It's tough playing in Koskinen. Yeah, for a, a team like Delaware coming out of the CAA, which is a very good conference, but, you know, it's, it is a step below the ACC. That, that's a statement of fact. How do you manage the nerves as a player coming into a game like this one? You know, it's tough. Uh, you got to try and find that right playlist, that, that, that right mindset when you take the field and, you know, try and eliminate everything that you're thinking about and just focus on the game focus on the next play right there he's got to have a quarterback mentality and you know he's got to forget about the drop and move on the laser from denenza missing wide but backed up by the blue devils they'll keep it here no reset of the shot clock that's now sub 30. Yeah, it looks like duke's trying to use uh use a set of wheels to try and break zone montgomery couldn't handle the pass denenza there again only to see Delaware come up with the ground ball. Delaware's zone serves its purpose. Vicious Delaware's check Delaware's got by a Montgomery. transition opportunity right now with Owen Grant in the middle of the field. Skip pass from Kurtz for Mike Robinson sailed past him, and Duke will take it back. Looks like the Delaware attackman thought it might have been tipped there. We've barely called the name Mike Robinson, and you see him here on the ride. He's number 19 in blue, CAA's preseason offensive player of the year. 43 goals in 13 games for Delaware last season. He was an offensive machine for the Blue Hens, but he's been held in check and very quiet so far today. Yeah, I think Duke's defense is big and aggressive, and uh, just in the couple couple possessions that they had in the first quarter, it looks like they're they're really trying to uh, stay heavy on hands and, and throw some some solid checks. Charlie O'Connor, the Virginia sophomore, locates Owen Caputo. Caputo dances to the goal line extended past Lully. And Lully will watch it go out of bounds. A Duke turnover. It's their sixth giveaway of the game. Another successful zone defensive set for Delaware. Duke did a really good job when Delaware was a man of moving the ball adjacent. Now it seems like they're 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 looking a little too hard for some skip passes and you know causing a little bit of missteps here and there. That's the chess match between these two coaches that know each other very well. Ben DeLuca recognizing that his defense was having a hard time slowing down the high powered Duke attack. You gotta do something unique, and he's gone zone, and so far it's giving the Blue Hens a chance to try and cut into this deficit. Yeah, not only does going zone help, but they put Owen Grant at the, the point of the zone, so it, it allows him to take advantage of his range and uh, kind of almost play the ball all over the place in the top of the field, which is where Duke was getting most of their opportunities off the slides. We heard the hype in the buildup on Grant into the game. What's impressed you? He's fast. He's big. He's fast. A um, couple times he picked up the ground ball. You know, his stick handling skills are, are impressive for a long pull. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to push transition a little bit more. Tend to shoot Kurtz from goal line extended. Looking for someone to pass to. Bita picks it up and a desperation shot goes in. Maybe not the way the Blue Hens drew it up. They'll take the result though. Yeah, it looks here low on the shot clock. Player just tries to throw the ball on net. Adler actually makes a butt end save and, you know, Delaware is able to clean up the garbage right there. It's great awareness by the attackman. Or is a midfielder in the that crease? It is the midfielder, yeah. yeah. Mark Bita. He's a graduate student from Bridgewater, New Jersey. Third goal this season for Bita. He has a great pickup and finish. 17 goals, 10 assists last season for Bita in 13 games. A 2021 season for Delaware that yielded the CAA's outright regular season championship. Ledman thought about pulling the trigger, pulls it out instead, tosses it away for O'Neill as Duke will get the offensive midfield on there. It looks like the ones are back up. And it is that first midfield line. Montgomery, McAdory, and Denenza. 
great thing about Duke's offense is the depth. You know, they had the ability in the first quarter to go as deep into the into their bench as the, the third offensive midfield and you know, has the ability to keep these guys a little bit well rested. And you think about Duke and where the Blue Devils are here in 2022, where they are is relying on the offense of Dyson Williams, who has a hat trick again. Six hat tricks in six games for Dyson Williams. Yeah, that was a great look by McAdory across the defense there for Dyson Williams to finish. It's amazing. He's talking about motorcycle insurance, and people love it. You deserve to save. I deserve to save. I mean, he has a way of making you feel seen. Bundle car and motorcycle insurance at geico.com. Gillette introduces the all-new Gillette Labs with exfoliating bar, a razor designed to give you a quick and easy shave. It combines shaving and gentle exfoliation into one efficient stroke. The bar in the handle removes unseen dirt and debris that gets in the way of the blades, giving you a shave as quick and easy as washing your face, so you can look like you put in an effort. Few have given more to the game of lacrosse over the last several decades than John Donowski. Dino now in year 16 at the helm of the Blue Devils. What a treat it is to talk to John Donowski. RJ, we had a blast talking to him prior to the game yesterday. Yeah, he's such a great guy. You know, the, the warm-up music prior to our conversation was impressive. So dove really deep into his CD collection there. Sporting the t-shirt today. It's a casual Tuesday at the office for Coach Donowski. He can wear whatever he wants. He's one of the most respected coaches in uh, lacrosse history. And he sees his team up by five, taking on a team led by his former well, protege, Ben DeLuca. Right here, Owen Grant coming up the field in transition. You said it, RJ, that he'd have opportunities in transition, finds Kurtz, extra feed for Ward. Had to slow things down for a half second on a slightly high pass from Kurtz. And perhaps that negated an opportunity for Ward to drive from goal line extended. Yeah, that's uh, that that's a, a tough bobble there by uh, J.P. Ward. That's a, an opportunity you got to finish if you're Delaware. Looks like he's he's still having trouble handing the ball the first time. Three turnovers already for Ward. Two in that goal line extended behind the cage area. One over by the sideline early on in the game. Delaware's turned it over five times. Duke with seven giveaways. Lenkaitis locates Ward, who handles it cleanly. Here's Robinson, CA preseason offensive player of the year, finds the back of the net. Ninth goal this season for Robinson, the junior from Peterborough, Ontario. Yeah, it looks like here uh, Delaware starts out initiating on a long pole, which you know isn't ideal, but we're able to get a short stick match up there, and uh, Delaware was able to take advantage of it. And, you know, what a shot. So Robinson coming off a 43-goal season last year that also included eight assists. 51 points in just 13 games. He had a huge game against NJIT in Delaware's season opener. Six goals in that contest, just a single goal in each of the last two. And has his first one here today. And then Delaware backs up with a faceoff win by Premtage. Flag is down. This will be on Duke because Delaware is allowed to play out the possession here. Yeah, that was an in incredible shot from an another guy north of the border. Perfect placement. And now Delaware is going to try and capitalize, come back in this game here. Chance to trim the deficit to three. Duke is led by as many as five in this one. Bita. The unenviable task, trying to turn the corner here. Ward handles cleanly. Good pick from Bita, enables Robinson to take a shot that Adler turns aside, and we'll get the penalty here. It's a good skip pass from J.P. Ward. Unfortunately, a high-to-high -high shot right there from about 12 with Adler with his feet planted. It's not a 
not going to go. Yeah, it looks like here they got a got a trip right here, and you know the refs called it well. Delaware is going to try and capitalize, get back in this game here. So a tripping call call on Duke's Cole Kraus, sophomore defender from Boonton Township, New Jersey. No relation to yours, truly. Spelled differently. Delaware will keep this one back up. Broken stick on the field. And that was Robinson who has the broken stick. So Lincitis will jog back in as Robinson grabs some new equipment. Kurtz looking for Clay Miller. Haven't called Miller's name much. He has registered a hat trick in each of Delaware's first three games this season. Right there, Delaware's crease guys doing a great job of drawing their defenders to the middle of the field. J.P. Ward with a wide open shot because of inside movement. A hat trick for J.P. Ward. Ninth goal this season, third today for the Maryland sophomore. And Delaware capitalizes on the man up opportunity. Yeah, right here, it looks like Clay Miller is just drawing the defender. Open up skip lanes for J.P. Ward to catch that ball and finish high side. It's impressive ball movement. Second career hat trick for Ward. Second season as a member of the Blue Hens. And as Duke wins yet another faceoff, Krause released from the penalty. The Blue Devils want to strike quickly. It's Ledman who whistles it wide. Dyson Williams able to maintain possession for Duke. It's a tough look with Ledman and his hands free at 10 yards. But RJ, when you consider the fact that Duke led this game by five, Delaware's registered back-to-back -back goals as we close in on halftime here. If the Blue Hens can pull back to maybe within two here, by the time the teams go into the locker room, that's a really positive sign for Ben DeLuca and company because they've settled in. Yeah, I would think that their players want to win this for their coach. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think Delaware is going to go down easy in this game. O'Neal thought about another long distance shot. We've already seen one from him today. McAdory, no look feed for Lully. Delaware needs to be really careful on the sides. Great save. Kilkiri right there. Dyson Williams camped out of the near post, trying to lull the Delaware defense to sleep and make them forget he was even there. Instead, Kilkiri turns it aside. Yeah, it looks like Delaware is trying to take advantage of the soft spots in the zones on the sides, um, which is how Dyson Williams scored that goal earlier. Uh, looked like they tried to do it again, but the, the goalie foiled a, a, an amazing shot. Delaware came into this game averaging 8.7 goals against in their first three, all victories. And in those first three games combined, just 10 goals allowed. One more for Duke would be a 10th goal. Miller, bouncer comes loose. Jessen will watch it go out of bounds. Determined to be out off of Duke. So Delaware will keep possession here. No reset, 25 to shoot. Ward in the neighborhood. Yeah, I think Delaware's first three opponents, uh, not not really in the, the level of, of Duke is, but uh, looks like they've kind of settled into this game and are starting to compete at a pretty high level. Ward Ooh. trying to go behind the back. Adler is there. The goal of transition here. They'll rainbow lob it ahead. And save. another save from Kilkiri. Duke trying to strike quickly in the transition. Now Delaware will do the same. Clay Miller streaking front side. Ward hesitates, and he will slow things down. Smart decision right there. Delaware should have took advantage of J.P. Ward on a short stick. Somewhat interesting that Delaware got down big in the first quarter here because sans the Robert Morris game where Duke exploded offensively in the first quarter. Ben DeLuca calls timeout here for Delaware, but continuing the thought, in that Robert Morris game, Duke exploded in the first quarter. Since then, first quarters have not been Duke's strength. Games have been even after first quarters, but Delaware has settled in in the second quarter. 
Yeah, it's kind of uh, kind of Duke's mo. It's uh, it's February lacrosse, just like Coach Janowski said. It's uh, it takes a little bit of while, a little while for them to get warmed up. Um, you know, I don't think that's much difference here. Uh, the, the previous games, you know, Duke is obviously a, a, a high caliber team, and you know, some of their players it just takes a little bit to get into the flow. So this is game number six for Duke already. And the Blue Devils come in four and one on the season. That win over Denver on Saturday, their first ranked win of the year. And in the games that they win, they've won big. All wins by at least eight goals. Yet the loss to Jacksonville, 14-12, kind of the wake-up call. And as we spotlighted throughout the game with yet another hat trick today, Dyson Williams has been a revelation for Duke. Yeah, Jacksonville came into Koskin and they were they were gritty, uh, they were tough. Their their bench was noticeably uh, more excited. Um, you know, they just they wanted it that game. And uh, looks like Duke got caught off guard. Uh, to be honest, you know, Jacksonville, I don't think they they uh, they were down the entire game. Um, you know, they, they were they were diving all over the field, picking up loose ball opportunities. Their goalie played exceptionally well. Um, you know, they were they were able to capitalize on everything they needed to do to upset the Blue Devils you say game six on February 22nd what is Duke doing the answer is you get 17 days of outside competition per season and you can use those as either games or scrimmages and a lot of teams will scrimmage outside competition whether it be in you know, late January maybe the first week of February or even in the fall but John Donowski says why not use all 17 of those opportunities to play games? That's exactly what Duke has done. So they have stacked the number of games early on in the season and are playing 17 regular season games this year. I love that mentality as a coach. You know, why not put it on the line? Might as well trust your players to play. You know, Coach Janowski said nothing's more enjoyable than playing in a game, and I have to agree. Channeling his inner Allen Iverson, he says, kids don't come here to practice. We're not talking about practice. <laughs> We're going to play a game. Flag comes down. Ward was trying to make his way down the goal line extended on Brower. Here comes the call. White, two, nine, slash, one minute. One minute slash call on Brower. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, and didn't really see it there. Looks like, uh, yeah, I don't, uh, maybe. Um, looks like a, the, the ref was just maybe calling makeup calls for how heavy Brower's been throwing checks the entire game. But, you know, to me, I didn't, I didn't really see anything different there than the previous uh, quarters. It's the former Hofstra player, Miko Red Arrow right on top of that call. He has been throwing some very mean, very, very heavy checks all game, though. So it's the man up here for Delaware. They scored in this situation just a moment ago. Robinson hits the crossbar. An inch lower, and they're within two. Delaware scored the last two. 30 more seconds on this man up. Yeah, it looks like Delaware's man up is, is pretty free flowing. They've got uh, their, their crease guy just moving around in a circular motion, trying to get their uh, the backside defenders to honor it. And I mean, right there, you know, you, you, you take, a, take a step off of the crease guy and you've got uh, an inside finisher that could put it on net. Miller got a nice look, couldn't finish. Waning moments of the EMO here. Not only that, but the crease movement here opens up skip passes as we saw in the first, uh, first man up goal from Delaware. Beat up for Kurtz. Ty Kurtz opened the scoring for the Blue Hens. Now he has a second today. Back to back EMO goals for Delaware. Yeah, right here the crease guy cuts down and draws down the top defender and he just steps into a, a great time and room shot. Puts that ball low and away. Sometimes uh, the low, low shots are a little bit deceptive for a goalie to read. Seven multi-goal games last year, now an eighth here in his second game that he's played in the 2022 campaign. Did not play the first two against NJIT or Mount St. Mary's. Naso wins a big face off there to uh, slow the Delaware momentum. Kostinowski with a timeout there. See if we can drop a 
of play. Use it or lose it timeout taken by the Blue Devils to try and get something going here. So as we've said, Delaware trailed this game by five, nine, four. Now they've scored the last three to pull back within two. Duke with the opportunity to score once more before halftime. So you've been in these huddles both as a player and as a coach. Take us inside the mind of Coach Dino and his staff. Yeah, right now what I'm thinking if I'm uh, Coach Stanowski, get the ball in Brendan O'Neill's hands. Um, you know, obviously you've got McAdory, you've got Joe Robertson, you've got you know, Dyson Williams. Um, but, you know, when you're 6'2", 237, as Coach Stanowski says, give him the ball and clear, give him some space. Um, you know, so I'd be surprised if they don't, at least within the first 10 seconds, get the ball into Brendan O'Neill's hands. Two goals today for O'Neill. Two for Andrew McAdory. Dyson Williams, three, leading the way for Duke. Another hat trick for Williams. He's had one in every game so far for the Blue Devils. One thing to keep, uh, keep an eye out for is if they're in zone or in, their, or in man. Uh, if I were Delaware, I, I would kind of start out here in zone, try and slow slow down an initiation from, from the Duke offense here. But uh, you know, if they come out in zone, you, you might want to get the ball into the hands of uh, McAdory or Nakai Montgomery and see if they can cause an early rotation in that zone and some up, somehow free up Brendan O'Neill on the backside. Well, that zone has given Duke problems all second quarter, so why wouldn't you go with it here? Yeah, yeah, you know, it, 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 it's all uh, it's all schemes in, in, in coaching. You know, out of the timeout, sometimes you might want to lock off Brendan O'Neill, maybe force him to uh, make another player beat them. But it looks like they're looks like they're out here in their zone. And that zone with Owen Grant at the top, 81 in blue, CAA's defensive player of the year. He has been a problem in the zone for Duke. Delaware scored the last three. Blue Devils looking for one more before halftime. Smart of Duke to come out in their man upset. That initial motion is their uh, initial motion for their man up. Lully and Caputo play catch. Lully with seven. Right here, Delaware needs to get on hands. One last look, it'll come from O'Neal, and it's turned aside by Kilkiri. He caps off a terrific second quarter for Delaware, and we have a two-goal game into the half. 30 minutes down, what'd you see in the first half, RJ? Well, first off, that was an incredible way to end the half for Delaware. Um, I mean, Duke did exactly what they needed to do. They got the ball in the hands of Brennan O'Neill for, for a time and room shot at the uh, final seconds. But, um, you know, I think for the first two quarters, I mean, Delaware's in it. You know, only down by two in Koskinen Stadium. Uh, I mean, Coach Luca's got to be happy with the way the Blue Hens have played so far. So, in a top 20 matchup, Duke led by as many as five, but J.P. Ward has a hat trick for Delaware. People assume they can't afford great insurance. Stop clock. Labs with the bar and effort. Yeah. For Memorial Day back in action this season, and RJ, it is sure great to see those traditional powers back on the field. Yeah, watching Yale this past weekend and Cornell kind of take their opponents to the to the end of the wire it's uh it's fun to see the the big strong ivy league boys back in the game historic weekend in syracuse the orange inducting legendary coach roy simmons jr into their ring of honor coach simmons a tremendous impact on the game of lacrosse yeah with such a, a traditional program like syracuse it's it's great to see that gary gate at the helm and the type of offense that they're playing and the uh the type of defense behind coach petromala Gary Gate having his jersey retired along with Katie Rowan from the Syracuse women's program. So the Orange honoring some history as they begin a new era there at the Dome in upstate New York. Speaking of women's lacrosse, Charlotte North is picked up right where she left off. She's scored 14 goals in Boston College's first two games. Yeah, Charlotte North from a non-traditional hotbed in Texas. She can uh, really bring the heat behind the ball and a uh, great ambassador of the game overall. So what's next for Charlotte North? How about the Eagles ACC opener? It comes up tomorrow, another matinee, one o'clock start in Charlottesville. Number one team in the nation, the Eagles heading south to take on a Virginia team that's looking to bounce back. Some of those numbers are gaudy, RJ. Yeah, if you're putting up 284 goals, you're doing something.
way home in this midweek matinee. Comes your way to see how you and ACC match up. Syracuse keep up. Stay with us. Goals finish on all of his opportunities. extend. Dyson Williams registers a hat trick for the sixth time in six games. Warden Williams leading the way in scoring. Look at that faceoff number. Duke dominant at the X. Yeah, Delaware's uh, definitely been been suffering some faceoff woes this season. You know, Coach DeLuca was not shy to admit that that's an area that they need improvement on. And looks like the uh, the, the Duke Blue Devils are very happy to have uh, Jake Naso back at the helm. Naso missed the game against Jacksonville a couple of weeks ago. Duke's lone loss this season, and he wins a 16th faceoff to get the second half underway. It's a good start for the Blue Devils, considering uh, the end of the half there. With the former Stevens face-off man, knows a thing or two about the X. RJ and Kiona, I'm Matt Krause. Thanks so much for being with us here. Sun's been playing peekaboo all day here at Koskinen Stadium. Started cloudy. The sun popped out in the second quarter. Looks like uh, Duke has Sean Lowley in there. Uh, Joe Robertson scratch for the second half. Robertson hobbled off the field with an injury around the midpoint of the second quarter. As RJ pointed out, it is Lully, 23 and white, who's operating the offense from X there. This is Lully, grad transfer from Penn. Delaware again sitting in that zone. It's a lot of length from Owen Grant playing defense up top. Unfortunately, you leave the inside open. Great look and great finish. Fourth goal of the game for Dyson Williams. Found a soft spot in the zone, took the feed from X, and Duke strikes first in the third quarter. Yeah, as the ball moves around the perimeter here, Brennan O'Neill finds a soft spot in the zone. Dyson Williams, great finish. These guys are, are really, really good at keeping their head up and their ball movement. Sixth assist of the season. Season for Brandon O'Neill. Dyson Williams now has surpassed his point total from all of last season. That was 16 games in this, just the sixth game of the 2022 season. As impressive as Brandon O'Neill's uh, freshman campaign was, he's become a even more complete player in his sophomore year. It's scary to see where he'd be in two years from now. That is O'Neill who gives it up for Ledman. An inside lacrosse story said that O'Neill was the Zion Williamson of college lacrosse. Comparing O'Neill with another highly touted young superstar that formerly played for Duke, just across the way at Cameron Indoor Stadium. I wouldn't disagree with that. That's a lot of pressure on a young kid, isn't it? He seemed to handle it pretty well. You know, he's playing for, uh, for 91 Long Island. I mean, he's. He's played in almost every big game that there is to play as a, a club lacrosse star, and um, you know he's made that transition really, really well. And when we asked Coach Donowski about Brennan O'Neill, and we said what makes him different, what makes him so special, he didn't talk about physical attributes as much as he talked about just what a great kid he is. He's got a great character. He's he's one of those guys from Duke that stays after, signs autographs, takes pictures with the kids. You know, that's, that's what lacrosse is really about. You know, yes, it's, it's great to win games and score goals like that there. A hat trick for Ty Kurtz, and it comes off a transition opportunity. Tic-tac-toe, Kilkiri, Grant, Kurtz, Delaware back within two. Yeah, just like we talked about in the first half, of Owen Grant's going to have some transition opportunities right there, a little flip pass to the point man, and puts it past Max Adler. You and I talked in the open about the impact that Grant was going to have in this game in defending O'Neal and trying to shut down that aspect of Duke's offense. But I've been equally impressed, if not more impressed, with his ability to run the transition break for Delaware. Yeah, I think now that they're playing zone, you know, Owen Grant doesn't have to solely rely on playing Brennan O'Neal. It gives his legs a little bit, a little bit more of a rest and allows him to uh, capitalize in the transition game. I mean, you know, it's 6-3 and able to stretch the field, being a long pole with uh, stick handling skills like Owen Grant. I mean, you're going to put some pressure on Duke's defense for sure. Cole Krause makes now they the try and for here. Lully, who scores. Same thing on the other side of the field. Pole starts transition, get it to the point guy, and then finish the ball. 
Cole Kraus, 66 and white handled for a while there, but here's Montgomery off the ground ball pickup to win possession again for Duke. Yeah, great recognition here by Montgomery to move it to the long pole, cutting down the middle of the field, and you know, great finish by Sean Lully, offside, offside hip. So the goal for Lully, his first of the day. Eighth goal this season for the Penn transfer. Nassau with a good pinch and pop here. Flags are down on the field. It'll be a penalty against Delaware. Duke will be able to play this out. O'Neill turned aside by Kilkiri, and here comes the penalty. It's a great save. Good skip pass from Lowe to O'Neill. Tenth save this game by Kilkiri. Looks like it could be an unnecessary roughness call. Legal body check. So a one minute legal body check on Justin Sinelli. He's a freshman from Collegeville, Pennsylvania, and Duke will go man up here. Yeah, it looks here like the faceoff guy goes to get a ground ball, and ooh, he's lucky he didn't get locked in for that. It's a legal contact to the head. Here, Duke likes looks like to uh, utilize the motion from the top point offensive guys and try and get the defense to rotate, leaving Brendan O'Neill with their, his hands free up top. So Duke goes man up. Over three in that department so far today. Looks like Owen Grant's shading pretty heavy over to O'Neill's side. I'd watch out for a skip pass either through or an inside feed. There it is. Third goal this season for Cameron Mule. Mule is a staple of the extra man offense for the Blue Devils for reasons like that. Yeah, right here they move the ball around the perimeter. It's just great inside cutting. You know, when, when you have a shooter on the outside like Brendan O'Neill, you have to give him a ton of respect and it leaves the inside wide open as long as you move. Lully on the assist, second straight Duke goal that he's factored into. And Duke on a mini two-goal run to go up four. Delaware trimmed it down to two. That's where it was at the half. Delaware picks this up. It could be huge. And they do indeed. It's just a fourth face-off one in 23 face-offs in this game. Delaware still has transition opportunity right now with Owen Grant down on the crease. Now they're finaled and settled offense. It's worth noting that the Blue Hens have gone to a third face-off specialist of this game. Logan Premtage, Roland Hockenberry saw time in the first half. That faceoff was taken by Corbin Menard. He's a freshman. Yeah, just like Coach DeLuca said the other day in our, our call, uh, you know, it's like rock, paper, scissors. You're going to throw everyone at uh, Jake Naso, Naso uh, see what works. You know, some guys might have a move that beats others, and some guys might have a move that you just can't stop. Clay Miller, CAA Offensive Player of the Week, finds the back of the net. Right here, it's a uh, dodge down the alley. Pumps the brakes really quick. He's able to reach his stick up field, get an extra angle, and just put it put it past Adler's off stick side. It's a great finish by Clay Miller. And just a moment ago, we were talking about how Duke had built the lead back to four, how critical this next sequence would be for the Blue Hens. They win a face off and able to take advantage of it with Miller, who's been the go-to guy offensively all year long. Ooh. It's a tough break there for Delaware. It looked like the Blue Devils player moved moved early. But it is a face-off violation on the Blue Hens. Got to be careful with those. Three face-off violations put you in the box for 30 seconds and creates a man-up opportunity. First midfield out there for the Blue Devils here. This is Macadori. Looks like Duke has uh, strategically left Naso on the field. They're playing five on five offense right now. This is definitely gonna wind up in Duke's favor. Lully missed it wide. That's great, great hustle. Barely backed up here by O'Neill. It looked like Delaware 
might have had a stick a little bit closer. That was Joe Spears, 44 in blue, trying to win possession back for the Blue Hens. Back into their settled defense now. Delaware drops into their zone. On the drive, it's Lully, and it's a goal. Third straight goal that Lully has factored into. Goal, assist, goal for the Penn grad transfer. It's a great individual effort by Lully here. He takes his man one-on-one. -on -one. The zone is uh, sloughed on the backside, watching Brennan O'Neill finishes across the face of the goal. Great recognition by Lully. So now a four-point game today for Lully. Duke back in front by four. So if you're Delaware here, you've found ways to score against Duke after a bit of a slow start. But as we've gotten into the second half, it's kind of been a punch for punch, trading goals situation. How do you string together stops and scores if you're Ben DeLuca? I think it starts with faceoffs. Um, you know, you might have to, we're just getting lucky, like opportunities like that. Um, but you know, Delaware might have to, might have to change up a, a little bit of their mentality on the on the faceoff X, maybe double pull the wings, uh, put a pole at the faceoff X. Um, you know, it might might be time for uh, Coach Luca to start bringing some uh, some wild cards out of his bag. Former Duke assistant Ben DeLuca spent two seasons here in Durham on Coach John Donowski's staff, taking his 17th ranked Blue Hens South, looking for their first win over an ACC team since 2007 against Virginia in the NCAA tournament. First win in Durham in a much longer span, April of 1985. Delaware actually leads the all-time series, 7-6. Robinson, it looks like it's wide. Six on five opportunity here for Delaware. Duke subbed off their midfielder. JP Ward, he has a hat trick already today. It's Ward, nice make it four. He matches his career high with four in one game. Yeah, Delaware right here in a, a little bit of a man-up scenario. Duke subbed off their midfielder. And, uh, the Delaware midfielder ran into defense, and J.P. Ward able to take, of, uh, take advantage of an individual matchup there. Great job. So J.P. Ward with four goals that matches his career high. Came against NJIT in the season opener last year. Delaware wins us a big face off here. And they do. Is that Owen Grant? No. There's another poll for the Blue Hens. Reed Kurtz, fellow senior. He's the brother of Ty Kurtz, who we've seen score a couple of times for Delaware. J.P. Ward's got his guy hung. Here is Ty Kurtz. He's hung again. Ward. Ward tumbles into the crease. Crease. And that will be a crease violation to give possession back to Duke. Duke has changed goalkeepers. Yeah, I was there. just about to say that. Looks like uh, Andrew Bonafidi's in. Senior out of Bay Shore, New York, has replaced Mike Adler. Lully is factored in the last three goals for Duke. He has the ball in his cross right now. Backs out as the Blue Devils bring the first midfield on. Denenza to Montgomery. McAdory now. First career two goal game for the freshman today. McAdory drives, scores. First career hat trick. So a hat trick for McAdory, and Duke pushes the lead back to three. He's known for his speed. It's on display here. Blue Devils, Blue Hens, and a good one in Durham.
Duke's 10 graduate students are in exams this week. One of them, Sean Lully, well, he's passed the test on the field, especially in this third quarter, RJ. Yeah, it looks like Sean Lully's done a great job of using his uh, his, his grad senior year to, to really put his lacrosse IQ to test. Uh, does a great job of, of finishing high side, getting inside, and recognizing opportunities with uh, Brennan O'Neill being on the perimeter. Former Penn Quaker. Played in just one game last year. We talked about it at halftime that the Ivy League did not play in the 2021 season. They were permitted to play a couple of scrimmages. Jake Naso might be hurt as Delaware takes it front side. Bonafidi makes a save. Naso limping toward the sideline at the bottom of your screen there. You see him just under the score bug make his way off. Yeah, Naso's, uh, Naso's taken a beating the last couple faceoffs. Delaware's done a really good job of getting to his hands quickly. I mean, he's winning the face off clean, but the wings are collapsing very, very fast. Hard check on O'Neill. It looks like O'Neill may have uh, dinged up the Delaware's defensive mini there. Well, you know he's big, you know he's physical. And Kai Montgomery misses on a bouncer. O'Neill catching his breath there for backup. Over on the sideline, Naso is being looked at by the training staff. He's been an integral piece in this four-goal lead for Duke. A 22-5 advantage at the X today for the Blue Devils. O'Neill fakes the pass to X. Looks like Duke's offense is trying to seal Owen Grant at the top. O'Neill. Shot clock under 20. O'Neill dodges, drives, side netting. Kilkiri picks it up, so there's a stop for the Blue Hens. Duke has led this game by as many as five. Delaware's trimmed it as close as two. That's where it was at halftime, 9-7. So the Blue Hens play for a ranked victory here. Bita. Delaware will slow the tempo. They trailed St. Joseph's last Tuesday by a goal. It was a 10-9 game late in the third quarter. Delaware would score the next three. St. Joe's would add one more, but Delaware hangs on for the one goal win, 12-11. Delaware's got their settled offense out there, and Nakai Montgomery stuck on defense, but uh, don't tell him he's an offensive midfielder. Just put that midfielder down on the ground. Robinson looking in front for Miller. Miller lost possession, tries to keep it in play, but ends up deflecting it over the end line, and Duke comes up with a stop of their own. Blue Devils prepare to bring the second midfield line on here. O'Connor, Caputo, but no offensive possession. Here goes Owen Grant in transition. The long pole, number 81 in blue. Grant wants to score, and he has it! It's the second this season for Owen Grant! What can he do? Good pickup by Owen Grant. Moves the ball upfield and continues down in transition. Looks like there the point guy was calling him on, and it's just so tough to read an overhand bounce shot from a long pole, especially when you're 6'3". Owen Grant, the defensive player of the year in the Colonial Athletic Association last year. Looks like Nassau's back at the X. Really good sign to see for the Blue Devils after being attended to by the training staff. Naso goes right back out there, wins yet another faceoff. A 23rd and 28 tries for the Blue Devils. Jaden Carey seeing some extended playing time today. 14 and white, he's out there with this second midfield unit. So good, good patient clear by Duke there. Caputo tosses behind for Lully. O'Neill had an opening instead defers for O'Connor. Thought O'Neill might pull the trigger out there from the wing. Yeah, me too. Uh, looked like the defender was able to get to his hands just in the nick of time, though. 
Got Jaden Carey open on the backside here, if you can see him. Set out top for O'Connor, 20 to shoot. O'Neal fakes, defers, but the pass is high. Duke turns it over for an 11th time. Might have caught some sun there on that pass. That sun has popped back out. Said it a little earlier in the quarter. It's been playing peekaboo with us here today. Yeah, as we saw in the uh, Ohio State UNC game, that sun makes a difference down here in uh, North Carolina. That game, like this one, a 3 o'clock start here in late February. You catch some of the pre twilight time. Long, long shadows. You can see them there on the field. Yeah, it was definitely notable. There was at least a dozen passes that were um, that were uh, affected by the sunshine there. Delaware can bring it within two here. I think they're sitting in a good scenario. That's the closest they've been since the first quarter when Duke went up by a 4-1 score. Ty Kurtz, he scored the first goal of the game for the Blue Hens. Javinsky back behind for Kurtz. Good save, Bonafidi. Bonafidi went low, pushed it up in the air. That is a shot clock reset, but they're going to give possession to Duke here. That was good hustle by Brower there. Thought that was going to be a reset to 60 for Delaware. New rule this year off of a missed shot by the offense that does hit the goalie or the goal itself. It's only a 60-second reset, unlike the 80 that it used to be. Delaware a little disorganized in their ride there. Duke didn't try and push it, though. Again, the sun. Brennan O'Neill couldn't see that ball at all. It's a costly turnover for the Blue Devils. Now they're leaving transition opportunity right now. How in the world do you manage that? Other than hope the sun goes behind the clouds. It's a, it's a tough thing to communicate mid-game, but you know, right there in between possessions, Brennan O'Neill's got to talk to his offense and, and say, hey man, you know, can't see the ball. Got to, got to spin it the other way or something. Uh, you know, I've seen players come out of the box, you roll the ball. There, there's, uh, there's ways to get around it, but can't continue to pass the ball into the sunshine like that. Otherwise, you're going to let Delaware stay in the game. Final minute of this quarter. Duke has added a goal to their lead from where it was at halftime. Looks like Delaware is going to be content here uh, getting a shot with the, the shot clock down, uh, down around zero. And somewhere in the neighborhood of a 16-second difference. And limiting an opportunity for Duke just as good as a goal here for Delaware. Watch, uh, watch for inside action. Albedo oh, is looking for a cutter. Trying to find Jessen moving down the alley. Calling that a pass. It's the last shot of this quarter. Again, if the they sun. won it, goes to Duke, but another mishandle. So Delaware will have a look. Clock down to 10. Kurtz moving forward. Oh. Kurtz scores! A fourth goal today for Ty Kurtz. And the duo of Ward and Kurtz have eight of the 12. It's incredible toughness to get inside like that. See right here, he, he evades the defender, protects his stick, and puts that ball low and away. Andrew Botafini didn't, didn't stand a chance on that shot. It's a great job by, uh, by the Delaware player getting inside. And Delaware brings it within two. 10th career four-goal game for Kurtz. 2021 second team all CAA pick, the 2019 CAA Rookie of the Year. Delaware pops it out the front. Good save by Nasso. We end the third quarter the same way we ended the first half. A two-goal lead for Duke. Can the Blue Devils hang on? We'll find out. You're not just another policyholder to us. We remember into one see it's been an 11 man ride for Delaware in the last few minutes of the third quarter and you say to yourself 
wait a minute, wait a minute. There's only 10 players on the field. How in the world can there be an 11-man ride? Uh, RJ, the Sun, getting involved. Yeah, good old Mr. Sun's wearing a Delaware jersey the third quarter there. Uh, Duke resulted in three turnovers because they couldn't see the ball. Hats off to Delaware taking advantage of, uh, of the Sun that quarter. Uh, unfortunately for them, they're going to be going that way this, this quarter. All evens out in the end, right? That's right. But great job by Delaware capitalizing on the, all their opportunities. Their zone has done a really good job of uh, frustrating Duke in the third, and they're able to claw back to two. With RJ and Kona and Matt Krause, top 20 showdown here today at Koskinen Stadium. Duke trying to win at home over a 17th ranked Delaware team that's hunting their first win in Durham since 1985. Their first win over an ACC team since 2007. Delaware has won just six of 29 faceoffs today, make it six of 30. Carpenter bringing it front side for Duke and they'll settle things down offensively. Yeah, that was good, good hustle, good effort there by the Delaware faceoff guy. Unfortunately, just wrong place at the wrong time and good pickup by uh, Carpenter there. Here comes the first midfield unit. Montgomery, McAdory, Denenza. Dyson Williams leading the way with four goals for Duke. McAdory, two in white, ball in his cross right now. First career hat trick today for the highly touted freshman. I would look for Duke here to, to start eliminating the, the, the crease offensive player. Um, you're going to look to follow the dodge, empty the crease, and then recut with either one or two guys trying to cause Delaware to uh, lose track of a guy on the backside. Delaware sent the slide on McAdory. O'Neal from goal line extended. Lully's been playing for Max much of the second half, trying to take it himself, Great smothered save. by Matt Kilkiri. 11 saves for Kilkiri. O'Neal's been neutralized this half so far. Not, not a lot from him so far. It looks like uh, Sean Lully has picked up some slack here, but Delaware defense is uh, doing a really good job of, of slowing things down. Now we mentioned Williams and McAdory in their high scoring afternoons. Two goals both in this half for Sean Lully. Speak of McAdory, we've got him stuck down, uh, down here on the defensive side. Looks like they're, we're playing five man offense right now for Delaware. Ty Kurtz, four goals. Robinson, a laser, it's backed up. Looks like Delaware is going to be content playing five man offense. Yeah, they've got McAdory. Stuck on the near sideline. Duke comes up with a turnover now. And here's where there's the benefit. The lightning speed of McAdory turns on the Jets front side. Extra pass. It's Lully. He wants a hat trick okay. all in one half, and he has it. Yeah, right there, the Delaware attackman doing a little bit too much. Pole picks it up, starting transition. McAdory, the flames on, coming downfield. Hits a point man down to Lully. Great hit shot, and finishes high side. Just like we said after, after half, Lully's been doing a really good job of, of utilizing his lacrosse IQ, and right there, plays it again. When we were talking about how, uh-oh, Duke's got McAdory stuck on the defensive ends. Is that the uh, that the plan all along, to have him be able to run the break there and set up that goal? Probably not. Yeah, theoretically, from a coach's perspective, um, you know, playing five on five offense is a lot easier than playing six on six. And right there, just tried to do a little too much and costly turnover for the Blue Hens. So now Delaware back to work, trailing by three. They've not been able to get it any closer than two at any juncture this second half. Vita pushed out. Vita starts his drive Good looking for Ward. The passing lane simply jumped by Duke. A yeah, great pickoff by Bonafidi there. Looks like the, the Delaware player was staring right at the feed. And got to stick right in the passing lane. Ledman a weapon in transition. Goal here for Duke off that Delaware miscue to push it back to four. Closing on 11 minutes to go. That would be critical. 
very much still anyone's game. This Blue Devil team hoping not to be on the wrong side of history. Duke has not lost twice on this field since 2017. They've already lost at home to Jacksonville. 14-12 defeat that John Donowski called a wake-up call for his team. Lully loses oh. his footing. Flag comes down, though. You can't hit a player when he's on the ground. Looked like Delaware was switching up their zone a little bit there. They had Owen Grant on the uh, left point kind of shading Brendan O'Neill's side instead of at the top point. I don't think Reed Kurtz was intentionally trying to hit Lilly there, but it was one of those incidental contact situations where the rule is the rule. You can't hit a guy when he's on the ground, right? Yeah, sometimes in the heat of the game, you get caught off guard a little bit. And, you know, sometimes he slips and your momentum kind of plays into it. And it looks like he just rode him down to the ground, which is uh, technically illegal. So a 32nd man up for Duke. One man up goal already today. Duke in a different man up formation right now. Montgomery out top gives it up for Lully. Montgomery out of the wing. Three seconds and two. Duke will not get a shot off on the EMO. Got to be careful right here. Delaware, great job recovering. Neal from goal line extended. Robertson back in there. Limited playing time in the second half after he hobbled off the field back in the first half. Lully's taken over many of the duties from X. Speaking of Lully, he jumps, he scores. Four goals, one half. Hey, great to see Joe Robertson back in the game here, but uh, looks, like, looks like the second half belongs to Sean Lully. Another great top side finish. Great handle, good vision. Just able to get high side. Really versatile player. We talked earlier in the broadcast about how he and Dyson Williams have switched between the midfield and the attack lines. You called it, RJ, kind of a positionless offense that Duke plays, thanks to guys like a Lily or like a Williams. Yeah, they do everything out of an open set, and um, you know, looks like they they really try and dictate who they're sliding from and, and who the, the defense is going to slide with. And, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter where you stand on the field. As long as you uh, communicate offensively and you kind of pick your poison, anyone could play anywhere. What do you mean by open set? So there are no, no guys on the crease. Um, you know, coaches call it different, different things. Uh, you call it open set, 60, um, zero, Omaha. You know, pull a page out of Peyton Manning's playbook. <laughs> Um, but yeah, if there's no guys in the crease, you know, you're in an open set. Uh, as a defense, you know, you want to look to slide adjacent. Um, right here, costly turnover for Duke. Rare mistake by Lully in this half. Nine and a half minutes left. Delaware is going to have to put their foot on the gas pedal here if they want to stay in this game. Down by four. They trailed by two at the half, nine, seven. Two at the end of the third quarter, 14-12. Duke's led by as many as five today. Second midfield on the field for Delaware. Okay. JP Ward mishandles a right-handed right -hand catch. Four goals, but also some bobbles all throughout the game for JP Ward today. Lenkaitis. It's a matchup for Delaware right here. Look how far out Lenkaitis has been pushed, though. Season opening, bounces it well, well short. They'll call that a shot. It'll stay with Delaware, but only 18 to shoot. Yep, right here, Lenkaitis calling for the ball again. No, recognize he's got a matchup with a short stick. Ward with 10. Doesn't have the angle because of Kenny Brower. Tries to go low, and it hits the side netting. Uh, unfortunately, in and out of the crease there. So, a fresh 60 for the Blue Hens. Luck of the draw from Delaware right there. The Duke Blue Devil player picked it up outside of the crease, stepped in the crease, not allowed to do that. And not a fresh 60, it's a fresh 80. Yeah, it looks, looks, like, change, yeah. looks like Delaware's getting their ones back on. Again, 
we've got a, a short stick matchup here. Mark Bita back out there, part of the first midfield. Nick Jessen with the ball in his cross Great right skip now. Great pass. Ward, oh, oh, he's turned aside. Andrew Bonafidi, right place, right time, and that is a critical save in this game. That's a terrific save by Bonafidi. We've got J.P. Ward climbing high side with his left hand, and Bonafidi stands tall and drives his hands to the ball. Denenza for Williams. One more Duke goal here would match their largest lead of the game. And halfway through this fourth quarter to boot. Denenza gives off for an open. Montgomery can't connect with Williams. Luckily for the Blue Devils, O'Neill is right there. Patient offensive approach here for Duke. Again, looks like Delaware is shutting off a player playing five on five. Someone's stuck over there. Ball pops free. O'Neill scoops it. It's Denenza. He bounces. Ooh. Tough break right there. Good pickup by O'Neill. Didn't hit anyone, so no shot clock reset, just 13 to shoot. Denenza again. Denenza scores with just six on the shot clock. Duke matches their largest lead of the afternoon. Aiden Denenza. Duke wore down the Delaware defense. Denenza down the goal line and scoots it past Kilkiri. Duke by five. Top 20 showdown here in Durham. Lacrosse games can often rest on momentum swings, and we just had a huge one here, thanks in parts to a save and a goal at the other end. Yeah, J.P. Ward with an incredible opportunity to get the uh, Blue Hens within a, a couple goals here, and uh, Andrew Bonafidi stands tall and two-goal swing. And Bonafidi doesn't make that save. Delaware pulls it to 16-13, three-goal deficit with right around seven minutes to go. That's very manageable. Instead, he comes up with the save. Duke takes it down, runs the shot clock all the way down to six, and now their largest lead of the game at five goals. Yeah, I'd look for Delaware, if they lose this face-off, to try and lose it back and possibly push up field in some sort of 10-man ride or some kind of pressure ride situation. It's going to be on Naso to try and secure this ball himself, the double pull in the wing. Face-off X has been dominant Delaware for Duke. outright wins it. But Roland Hockenberry comes up with the face-off win, just Delaware's eighth win in 33 tries. Delaware's going to turn over here. Brower, vacuum cleaner to pick it up. And those are the little things that you have to attend to. A rare face-off win today for Delaware, and they're unable to even get a shot off. Yep. Again, Delaware is in a 10-man ride here. So that leaves three seconds. Goal open at the other end, and awesome it does turnover result there. in a turnover. Yep. Yeah, it's a great job by Delaware putting the pressure on the on the uh, on the corners. So Nick Jessen will restart things here for the Blue Hens. Talked to Ben DeLuca, the head coach at Delaware. He said, in order for his team to come away with a win here today, they would probably need to play close to a perfect game, their best game that they've played all season. And while Delaware's had flashes of brilliance, there have been little mistakes here and there. Yeah, unfortunately, a couple drop passes, you know, mistakes like that, that pass down there off the faceoff. Great single handed effort there. Mark Bita, the fifth-year senior, keeping Delaware in at a critical goal to snap the Duke run. First goal of this fourth quarter for Delaware. Yeah, the co-captain here recognizes he's got a short, sick matchup and good inside roll and a fake the goalie out with a, a, a low, low look and pulling the ball over his shoulder. Good low to high finish. Second today, fourth of the season for Bita. Utilizing the extra year to come back to Newark. 
Naso comes up with a critical face-off win. Aggressive ride by Delaware. Open field contact. Duke keeps it. Got to be careful there if you're Duke. Montgomery able to find O'Neal. Kudos to the Delaware player uh, holding up there instead of blowing up the Duke player. Taking a, a costly penalty at this point in the game would be, would be tough on Delaware to come back from. Five to go. Duke's led by as many as five. Most recently, just a moment ago. Delaware back in their zone with uh, Owen Grant at the point. I'd say this is probably the last possession that they can they can rely on sitting back in zone. They need to be more, more aggressive, try and force a turnover, move yep. forward. Absolutely. You just got to be careful that you don't be too aggressive and overplay the ball. Rolling clock, the best friend of the Blue Devils right now. Kyle Montgomery's wide open. McAdory, three goals already today. Just five to shoot. McAdory, feed back to Williams. Jarred free. <laughs> wow. Five goals all after halftime. And that might put it away. What a great individual effort on the pickup by Sean Lully and getting top side and utilizing the dive to uh, finish that ball in front of the cage. It's a great way to get a little extra angle on your shot, put it right past the goalie there. Back-to-back -back Duke goals coming with less than 10 seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, it's going to play in Duke's favor the longer they could hold on to the ball. Not only do they push the lead back to five, but they run the game clock down to nearly four minutes and will take possession here. Unfortunately, Delaware couldn't pick up with that loose ball. Looks like the Blue Devils are still having trouble with the, uh, the sun down here. And sun now back out. It's cloudy in the first quarter, mostly sunny in the second quarter, and then back and forth all through the second half. A little uh, strategy here, Duke is, uh, is keeping their defensive middies on the field, or at least one of them. And when we talk about the sun, you saw Duke roll the ball up the field there. Prevents a pass in the air. Yeah, Delaware is uh, sort of shifted off into more of a more of a man look here. And you see Grant on O'Connor. Knocks it free. Great There's job. a turnover. Ball away. Transition opportunity looks like uh, Owen Grant is slow to get up. That's not good for Delaware. Grant hobbling back toward the sideline. Not a lot of time to waste for the Blue Hens. Under three, down five. Need more than a goal a minute now. Bita, two goals today, including the most recent one. Had an opening, but matched up on the long pole of Cole Kraus here. Takes it goal line extended. Oh, that's a slash. Out comes the flag. Smart. Very smart by the Delaware player to get that, get rid of that ball so that they could take the man up opportunity. Heady play by the senior Ty Kurtz. Yeah, very smart. Very smart. If, if they use the rest of the shot clock there, they're just eating away time. Better off shooting the ball out of bounds or at the net, making sure that they can utilize the, the full man up opportunity and still have some time on the clock. Right here, you see the Duke defender just wind up and Crack the Delaware defender right in the hips here and take that shot, get the ball back. So the penalty on Cole Krause gives Delaware a 30-second man up. Delaware's got to act quick here. At two and a half minutes to go. Yep, look for a quick rotation and a cut with either an inside feed or an outside shot. They need a goal every 30 seconds from here on out. Can't get one there. It is backed up. Will Frizzoli. Sacrificing his body right there to uh, to block that one. Brazoli made his first career Duke start against Ooh. Robert Morris in the opener. Delaware's just going to start firing shots at the cage at this juncture. Bonafidi took that one right off the face mask. Nice shot. It's Mike Robinson who goes low and stings the net. 
great ball movement. It's a perfect placement from Mike Robinson. Yeah, right here, the ball moves around the perimeter as it does. Duke has to rotate, unfortunately, just a little too late. And looks like Mike Robinson used the, uh, the Duke defender as a screen there. Not sure if Bonafidi even saw that. Tenth goal this season for Mike Robinson. Second today. CAA's preseason offensive player of the year. He can shoot the ball. 43 goals last year. I do tend to believe that he can shoot it. Duke utilizing a new face-off guy for some fresh legs. At this point, we might see Delaware pull its goalie out, try and double-team the ball. Look for it once the ball gets below goal line extended. Denenza. Here comes. Duke recognizes the opportunity. Kill Curie out of the crease. It's an open net. Yeah, look to attack the goalie here. Williams. Williams, Vegan can feed it in front. There's no one in the cage. Oh. Knocked away from Denenza, though. That was Kevin McCormick that got a stick on it. Yeah, right there, the uh, the goalie's, goalie's out of the net. You got the Dyson Williams with the ball. Unfortunately, uh, got to follow Jim Berkman's rule. Coach from Salisbury, don't shoot at an open net. So Duke leads it by four here with 69 seconds to go. Timeout called. What a second half it's been for Sean Lully. The grad transfer from Penn has five goals today, all of them after halftime, RJ. Yeah, right here, Sean Lully, again, gets top side, finishes the ball. He's been inc incredibly efficient on his opportunities, and if you look at the scoreboard, Duke's up by four. Well, Lully's got five of them this half, so. Math tells me that's one more than the difference. That's right, if Lully wasn't in this game, Duke would be one down. Today, Dyson Williams, Sean Lully have combined for nine of the 18, half of Duke's goals. We talked about all the weapons Duke has offensively and Brennan O'Neill right off the top, but it's been these two. These two guys that interchange between the midfield and the attack unit, they've carried the load today. Yeah, the, the defense from Delaware, when they're in their zone, there's so much respect for Brennan O'Neill being on the perimeter that they have to they have to honor that side of the field. And, you know, fortunately for Duke, they're taking advantage of the backside. And those two players have really capitalized on their opportunities in front of the gauge. Five goal game for Lully. He had seven on the season through the first five games for the Blue Devils. There's two off of that in one half here today. Previous season high, two goals each against Manhattan and Denver. Yeah, right now off this timeout, I'd, again, I'd, I'd probably see Delaware with their goalie trying to cover the closest guy to the crease. And, put Owen Grant and, and their second best pole on the ball, see if they could take it away. 109 to go. Duke trying to put the finishing touches on oh, the hold up here. The goalie is at attack. The goalie's at attack for Delaware right now. And McAdory drives in and scores, takes advantage of the missing keeper. So I've heard of it done. I've never actually seen it in person, but they put the goalie down at attack which gives Delaware an opportunity to play with six, sorry, seven playmakers on defense. Hopefully take advantage of the situation. It looks like, looks like Duke was just a little bit too athletic there and ran past him. The speed of Andrew McAdory, perhaps his greatest asset, the highly touted freshman now with a fourth goal today. Well, for Delaware, they get another crack at the faceoff. Unfortunately, it, uh, it's not, it's not going their way. And Duke will win possession back up five, less than a minute to go. Duke has brought Garrett Smith into the game, the senior from Mountain Lakes, New Jersey. He's in at goal. Duke will go a little bit deeper into the depth chart here. Get some guys on the field. 49 of the 52 players in the Duke roster healthy and dressed today. So John Donowski letting them get on the field. Well, Ben DeLuca wanted to see his Blue Hens come south and compete, and RJ, I think they've done just that today. 
Yeah, they did a great job in the, the, the first first three quarters of, of keeping it pretty close. And unfortunately, uh, too many mistakes for, for the Blue Hens down here in Koskinen. Final 10 seconds, Delaware will back away. And the mentor will defeat the protege in this top 20 matchup. John Donowski beats his former assistant Ben DeLuca and the seventh ranked Blue Hens earn their second straight top 20 win. They beat number 17 Delaware 19-14. RJ, it was entertaining. Ultimately though, Duke just a little bit more athletic, a little bit more physical, and they win this one. Yeah, it was great to see the, the matchup here. You know, Coach DeLuca said that they were gonna try and play